So we've identified the distance traveled in centimeters corresponding to the time in seconds. So each second, one second, two second, three seconds, each second corresponds to the distance traveled in centimeters. And now what we have collected this data, so let's say in the one second we traveled 83 centimeters, um, in two seconds we traveled 170 centimeters, and the th uh, three seconds we traveled 210 centimeters. So now that we've compiled this data, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze it and we're going to create a line graph. So the first things first is creating a line graph, we want to create something looking like this. And then what we're going to do is determine which one of these time or distance is considered independent variable or dependent variable. So remember, independent variable is something that you would um, manipulate, something that you're manipulating in your experiment. And the dependent variable is what is responding to whatever you're manipulating to. So in this case, what we have, what we have is the manipulating variable, which is the x-axis. Um, we'll label that x, and the dependent variable, which is the y-axis. So in the x-axis, what we have is the independent variable, which is time. So time is what we're manipulating. We're changing it every second. The dependent variable is what is responding. The dependent variable, which is the y, is responding to the x-axis. So the dependent is responding to the manipulated variable. So every time time changes, the, dep the dependent variable also changes along with time. And so the dependent runs on the y-axis, and the y-axis is labeled is the vertical line, and the x-axis axis is the horizontal line. And the way you can remember that uh, the dependent variable runs on the y-axis is d r y. In other words, dependent runs on the y-axis. So once again, it's dependent runs on the y-axis. So the dependent variable runs on the y-axis, which is vertical, and the independent variable runs on the x-axis, which is horizontal. So the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to label the x and the y-axis. So for the x-axis, we have time in seconds. So we want to make sure that we include the time, um, the, la the, the label for the x-axis, as well as the unit, which is in seconds. Same thing with the y-axis. The y-axis is the distance in centimeters. So we'll label that distance and don't forget to put your units, which is in centimeters. So the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to evenly space this out so that we have one second, two second, and three seconds. So we make sure that it is even. So one, two, three. So notice that the space between here and here is, is, is the same as the space here and here, here and here also. So we have one, two, three seconds. And now what we're going to do is determine how we're going to set up the y-axis. So notice that this comes, um, it's 83, 170, and 210 centimeters. So how can we determine, how can we evenly space this out into three increments so that it's equal? So what we can do is we can start by um, doing 80, 160, and 240. So let's uh, do that here. So we'll start with, remember it has to be this space, has to be also this from here to here is equal from here to here. So we'll do 80, 60, and 240. So 80, 160, and 240. Okay, so um, we're going to put zero here. And why? Because we started from zero seconds all the way to three seconds, and we started from zero second from zero centimeters all the way to uh, 210 centimeters. So we'll put a zero there. Okay, so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to, whoops, change this. We're going to determine in one second how many centimeters did it travel to. So here we have one second, so we're gonna move, we're gonna follow that up, and how many centimeters did it go up to? So it traveled 83 centimeters. So we'll just estimate where 83 is, and it's above 80, obviously, so it'll be right there. 
and then the one second would be this way and so we'll put a dot right where it intersects the word intersects means wherever they both come to meet um, where the where the two numbers meet okay so the next one we have in two seconds the car traveled hundred and seventy centimeters so here's two seconds and 170 is about we're gonna guess about right here so what we'll do is we'll do dotted line and then two seconds dotted line and so it in intersects right there let me just get a different color here okay so in three seconds it traveled 210 centimeters so in three seconds find that over here in the x-axis and the 210 is approximately light over here so we'll do that and three seconds follow up and they intersect right here great so now you have the three points so we have one second two seconds and three seconds so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect it and normally what we do is we use a ruler so we're going to pretend that we're using a ruler here so from one second to two second two seconds to three seconds and we're going to start from zero so notice what can you conclude about the distance traveled distance traveled versus time so what do you can what can you say about the distance um, traveled and in um, over time this particular car so let's recap what we have so we've collected our data so this is the data that we've collected um, we collected the time and one two and three seconds so every every second we uh, marked where the car uh, and ended up and so what we have in one second the car traveled 83 centimeters in two seconds the car traveled a total of 170 centimeters and in three seconds the car traveled a total of 210 centimeters. Now we've established that the independent variable is the x-axis. So the independent variable is what we are changing. Um, so that is the x-axis. So the independent variable is what we have control over. The y-axis is the dependent variable. The dependent variable is dependent upon, is responding to the, um, to the manipulated variable. So every second, the dependent variable has a response, which is the distance. And then um, we have labeled our graph. So the x-axis is the horizontal from left to right. The y-axis is, is vertical from bottom to top. And on the y-axis, we, um, we have the dependent variable. So the dependent, dependent runs on y-axis. That's how you can remember it, dry. And so the independent variable runs on the x-axis. So we labeled our, our, our axes. So we have time uh, in seconds. Make sure that we have um, the units there. And we have distance um, traveled in centimeters. Make sure to also include the units. And after that, we've established that in one second, the car traveled 83 centimeters so that we'll find that here and where it intersects we put a dot it's the same thing with two seconds two seconds the car traveled 170 centimeters so wherever it intersects we put place a dot in three seconds the car traveled 210 centimeters so we've established that it would be around here put a dot and then we'll, we connected all the dots and so what we notice is that as the time moves as the time goes on the distance traveled the total distance that traveled the car sorry the total distance the car traveled uh, increases and this is also this is obviously um, and you can relate this into your own personal life if you are going from point a to point b let's say from your house to school um, the total distance increases as time increases and so that we've, we've found here is that there's a correlation between time and distance.